Welcome to Electro Line, and in this third example, we have a diverging lens. At least if we place the lens in a medium that has an index of refraction that's smaller than the index of refraction of the lens, this should be a diverging lens. This looks just like this lens over here. Notice, even though both of the radii have a what we call positive curvature, the left side or the front side of the lens has a positive curvature, which makes it a converging lens. The back side of the lens has a has a what we'll call a positive curvature, but that would make it that diverging lens, because if the back side of the lens is, it has a positive curvature or bends to the left, then it's a diverging property. Now notice that the radius of curvature of the back side is smaller than the radius of curvature of the front side of the lens, and you can easily see that when you continue the curvature lines like this. You can see that the radius of curvature is much greater for the front side and the back side, the smaller the radius of curvature, the stronger that side of the lens is. The more the magnification of the lens in that respect, or the smaller the focal length, which makes it a stronger lens. So the back side wins over the front side, which makes the whole lens a diverging lens. Let's see if the numbers bear that out. Okay, so we have 1 over the focal length of the lens is equal to n sub l, which is an index of refraction of the lens, 1.5, divided by index of refraction that looks like it's water, minus 1 times 1 over r1, which is 50, minus 1 over 20. All right, let's go ahead and simplify that and see what we get. So 1 over f is equal to 1.5 divided by 1.3 minus 1 times, the common denominator here is 100, so it would be 2 over 100 minus 5 over 100. So 1 over the focal length is equal to 1.5 divided by 1.3 minus 1. Notice that this is, is going to be greater than 0 because 1.5 divided by 1.3 is greater than 1 times 2 minus 5, that's minus 3 over 100. There's the negative sign. That will cause the whole thing to be negative. All right, let's see what we get here. 1.5 divided by 1.3 uh, minus 1 times 3 divided by 100 equals, so we have... 1 over the focal length of the lens is equal to minus 4.615 times 10 to the minus 3. And of course, that would be 1 over centimeters if you want the units in there. And then, of course, we take the inverse of that to get the focal length. So the focal length is equal to the inverse of that number. There we go. So it would be 217 centimeters. And, oh, can't forget the negative sign equals minus 270 centimeters because that makes it indeed a diverging lens. Notice it has a very long focal length, so it's not a very strong diverging lens, but diverging nevertheless. In other words, if rays go through the lens parallel, they will diverge out away from the, the optical axis after they go through the lens. That's how you do that.